What's up guys? We are back with another educational video and this week we are talking about flexible dieting. Actually, flexible dieting, IFYM, which is if it fits your macros, actually in a research paper. Kind of cool to see the term IIFYM in a research paper. So let me tell the story, we're gonna have to go back. Back in time. When I got into bodybuilding, one of the things that I noticed from reading the muscle magazines, and I'm gonna date myself here, I got into bodybuilding right around the year 2000, and we read Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness, and that's all we had back then really for evidence of what to do. And in each magazine, they would list whatever top bodybuilder competitors diet. And it was always super clean foods. And I would read these magazines and I would feel like, you know, I can't afford Alaskan wild caught salmon, but they would list the macros at the end of the articles. And I always thought, well, I can hit those macros. So I still believed that I needed to eat clean foods in order to get to my goal, clean having no objective definition. And I didn't have a really good understanding of physiology at the time, even though I was doing my degree in biochemistry. I had a good understanding of mechanisms, which actually further increased my belief that we needed to eat clean foods. And when I got to graduate school, things kind of flipped for me. As I started to read more research studies in graduate school, I started to change my mind as I saw the evidence, especially as it related to like unclean foods, you know, like sugary foods or foods with high fructose corn syrup. You know, I thought that under no circumstances can you really lose fat, you know, with, you know, any amount of sugar in your diet or high fructose corn syrup. And as I read more and more research papers, I just got more and more disappointed with the fact that uh, what I believed to be true didn't seem to be true, which was if calories were equated and protein was equated between different diets, sugar and, and this other stuff didn't really seem to make much of a difference, actually made no difference on body composition. But yet still the notion that you needed to eat clean persisted in competitor circles. So when I started coaching people circa 2005, 2006, 2007, I would get asked a lot on the bodybuilding message forums, hey, can I eat X and get ready for a show? And my response and the response of a few others like Eric Helms, who's now a, a very well-known researcher, was always, yeah, if it fits your macros. And so that if it fits your macros kind of became an IIFYM acronym. And we'd kind of always say, hey, yeah, you can have, you know, an apple, you can have a pop tart. You, well, you know, as long as you fit your macros, you're gonna be able to hit your goals. Now keep in mind that eating really calorically dense foods is not gonna leave you very satiated and you might be really hungry, but you can do it. Well, people took this for, you know, this was blasphemy amongst bodybuilding circles. And I had people say, You'll never be able to prep somebody for show that way. You'll never get anybody to the pros that way. You'll never get anybody on Olympia stage that way, which I ended up doing all those things and several other coaches have done all those things. So I had a client a while back who's no longer a client of mine. She's gone on to form her own coaching company named Lauren Conlon. And I think I started working with Lauren when she had just turned 20. We worked together for several years and she ended up winning her IFBB Pro Card. She actually won 2014 NPC Nationals. She won the entire show for Bikini. Uh, one of my more proud moments as a coach since I'd worked with her from such a young age. And she went and actually did her master's degree in Bill Campbell's lab. They have recently published a study examining fat loss comparing flexible dieting versus basically clean eating, a, a defined meal plan over a 10 week period. And then at the end of the 10 week period, they let the, both groups kind of eat ad libitum, meaning whatever they wanted. Now I was actually around when this study was being discussed previously. I wouldn't say I was involved in the planning of it, but I got some ideas bounced off me. But Lauren and Bill and the other students in the lab came up with the study, executed the study, and it had some pretty surprising results, to be honest. So now we all thought we basically, the outcome would be was we wouldn't really see any differences in fat loss. And we thought we probably might see differences in fat gain after the diet was over. We thought that maybe the people adopting the more flexible dieting mindset would be able to resist fat gain a little bit better than the people who were on a meal plan. So they were using people who were resistance trained and they were pretty well resistance trained. I think the average amount of time spent resistance training a week was over four hours. And they basically found their maintenance calories and had them eat in about a 20% deficit. And they did that for 10 weeks. Well, 
Like the researchers thought, there was no difference in fat loss. No statistical differences between groups anyway. Both groups lost fat, and there was also really no difference in amount of lean body mass lost. In fact, both groups basically maintained almost all their lean body mass. And a lot of that could be attributed to the fact that they were eating two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. They went pretty slow in terms of the rate. They were targeting about half a percent of their body weight loss per week. And there is research to show that kind of the slower you go on weight loss, uh, the less lean body mass you lose. And they basically had essentially the same changes in metabolic rate, which were almost nothing. At the end of the 10 weeks, they kind of let them go off on their own and said, hey, do whatever you want. Both groups also filled out a TFEQ, which measures ratings of hunger, disinhibition, cognitive restraint. So basically looking at kind of how food focused they were. Surprisingly, at least to me, they didn't really see any differences between groups, which again, the more I've been in this, the more I've kind of learned that what is easy for one person may feel hard for another person. And vice versa. So there's probably people out there who flexible dieting feels hard for. In fact, they talked about this in the paper. They talked about how some people can be inflexible with flexible dieting as it relates to these are my protein, carbs, and fats, and I have to hit these numbers exactly. That's not a flexible mindset, and that's not what flexible dieting is about. Regardless, there was one really surprising finding of this paper. They found that the group following flexible dieting gained significantly more fat-free mass after the diet was over than the rigid group, the rigid group being the meal plan group. In fact, it was almost a two kilogram difference in fat-free mass, and the authors didn't really have a way to explain it. And I don't really have a way to explain it. I think the authors did attempt to make a stab at it. It was a thin stab, but I think it was a good possible hypothesis, which is there is research showing that if you have high overall life stress, it can be difficult to adapt to resistance training to basically make gains in strength and hypertrophy. And the authors speculated that perhaps the rigid mindset left them less prepared to deal with the after effects of dieting since they no longer had this meal plan and they were going off and doing their own thing, that perhaps that was stressful for them and maybe that impeded their ability to gain lean body mass. That's a very tenuous assertion, but you kind of have to speculate when it comes to this kind of research when you get an unexpected result. I would say that that's a good stab. I would also say that even though they showed no difference in adherence, food recall logs are notoriously inaccurate. And it is possible that the group that had been following flexible dieting versus the group that was on a rigid meal plan became so in tune with tracking everything that they were just more consistent in that post-diet period and thus gained more lean body mass or fat-free mass. I think that's probably the most likely outcome. I do not think that flexible dieting is inherently more anabolic than, you know, quote unquote, clean eating. But this study still supports the mass body of literature showing if calories are equated and protein is equated, you lose similar amounts of fat regardless of the other dietary variables and how they may change between groups. What's the takeaways from this practically? If you like flexible dieting, you're not missing out body composition wise by following flexible dieting and maybe even possibly better gains, but I, I think that that's really thin. We need a lot more research to understand why the flexible dieting group made better gains in fat-free mass. It is possible that it's just a complete data artifact and never gets reproduced. That's also possible. That does happen, but it's worth further exploration. If you like a meal plan, if you like eating clean, that's fine too. You can make perfectly great fat loss doing that. And you should choose whatever methodology feels easiest to you. But understand, in order to have long-term dietary success, you should aim to have a flexible mindset. Meaning, it's okay to track macros. It's okay to have a meal plan. Where people get in trouble is, oh, I, I can't hit my macros exactly, so I'm just gonna do whatever and binge eat. That happens quite often. By same token, people following a meal plan, if they go off track a little bit, they go out for an unplanned meal, they don't have their meals with them, then the same thing can happen. They have a non-flexible mindset, an all or nothing mindset, and it leads to disinhibition and binging. And a lot of people struggle with that. So it's important to have flexibility. I don't have my meals with me, 
I didn't plan for this meal. Okay, I'm going to eat to my satiety cues and then I'm going to stop. I'm not just going to turn this into an all I can eat buffet. You can have a rigid mindset while doing flexible dieting. And you can have a flexible mindset while using a meal plan. Either one is fine. It just depends on your personal preference. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Additionally, make sure you go follow Bill Campbell and Lauren Collin. Uh, I believe Lauren has a YouTube. I'm not sure about Bill, but they're both on Instagram as well. So make sure to give them a follow and I will catch you guys next week.